Hey everybody, so for the course of this video, I'm going to be working on the rear spar uh, of the left wing, that is. Uh, specifically, the rear spar web, uh, the rear spar doublers, and uh, eventually that's where those bracket uh, hinge assemblies will get put on. So there are three uh, small spar doublers, uh, two of which are exactly the same size, one that's slightly uh, narrower that goes on the very far end. One of the two that are the same size will actually have a hole uh, cut through it. That's the one that's in the, uh, on the outboard of the doubler. And also, this is where I'll be working with the rear spar reinforcement fork as well as the uh, another thicker doubler plate that goes very far inboard. So that's what I'll be doing here. Uh, the majority of this video in the beginning is going to be about just match drilling all the things. And then I go through and I cut the uh, hole that goes right next to that hinge bracket. And you'll actually get to see me cutting that on my scroll saw. Much of this video is still somewhat the old format, but it's going away. This is, I think this is one of the last ones where it's the old crappy format. Uh, this video could be potentially long, could be short. I'm not exactly sure yet. Depends on how much I want to cram into one video. I did just release one yesterday. I figured trying to get as much done as possible for you guys to see what I'm doing so I can try to catch up. Pain in the ass, I'm telling you. Uh, anyways, so uh, drilling the hole for the Aralon pushrod, uh, which is what I'm going to go into detail for the next five or ten minutes here, is actually kind of cool. It's a, it's a neat process, and uh, I will show you exactly how I ended up solving it. The way they want you to actually solve it is to have various different bits they give you center points, and they say, you know, drill a giant bit around this center point. Now, I don't know if they want you to use Forstner's bits or what, but I just didn't go that route. I have a scroll saw, so that's what I wouldn't use. Also, I was talking um, during all of this using my Bluetooth headset, and I figured I would talk while doing the work just to have something so I don't have to do this voiceover, and it just did not come out at all. So, uh, yes, I am talking to myself, but I was actually talking to you guys. Anyway, I'll let me from the past uh, give you guys a clue what's going on. So page 15-3 has you uh, match drilling and working with this uh, doubler material on the back of this rear spar uh, piece here. And specifically around this hole here, on the doubler itself, you're going to um, have to cut out this push rod hole. It's kind of an odd shape. And they give you a number of points on which you would drill and then use a drill bit to drill through to get roughly that shape. Uh, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to take this home and do this work instead on my uh, skull saw because I can. So I'm sure there are uh, many a fine people that will berate me for cheating, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to work uh, work smarter, not harder on that one. Hey, if you got the equipment, you might as well use it. So here I am in my shop at home and flip, the, uh, flip my desk over there so I can actually use the scroll saw part of it and start the work. Uh, I do have, I, I went through and I had to find my metal bits. I do have only a few metal bits. I, I mostly do wood when I work on that thing, but uh, I, I did have some metal bits. So it was just a matter of going through and finding them and getting them set up and uh, use them. I think... I think this is probably the better way to go. I'm sure the system that they wanted you to use was a fine system, but I also didn't have drill bits as big as they wanted, so I went this way instead. Also, you'll note that that audio wasn't very good because uh, I kind of had given up on using the Bluetooth thing at this point because I was just frustrated with it. All right, so uh, one of the things that I have to do is cut out this... Um, drawing that I've got on here uh, that is for uh, you know a special shaped hole. I forget exactly what it's for off the top of my head. I don't have the plans in front of me. I left them at the hangar. Uh, the problem is, is I can't draw it on this side and get an accurate reading of it, but this is the side I would want it on so I can get a flat lie on my scroll saw. So uh, I just put a couple blocks on here so that I can do it on the side that actually has the diagram. And so now I'm going to drill a pilot hole in the center of it and then put a blade through it and give it a cut. So note, this is actually sped up like 300 times. Uh, when I use a scroll saw, especially through aluminum, I go really, really slowly. Uh, so this, this, is, this is vastly sped up. So if you do end up going this route, 
it takes a while. Uh, and I also worked very hard to keep my hands still and solid on there while doing this again to, you know, get a good firm cut all the way around there that was well within the line and looked right. Uh, and I think it actually came out really nicely. I was also surprised at how well this, you know, just setting the, the camera on top of my magnifying uh, glass there <laughs> made it made it come out really nice. And here's a before picture where I just put the metal on there, made sure the lines, the circles were lined up, and then used the pen to draw inside to actually get the shape on the piece that I was going to work with. You watched me make the cut, and once I was done with that, I went back out to the hangar and began cleaning up the part that I had just produced in order to get it, you know, put put on the uh, put on the rear spar so I can move on to the next bit. It actually came out pretty nice. After doing a couple test fits, it uh, it, it matched almost perfectly. Uh, ever so slightly, there was just a little bit that needed to be shaved, but uh, I did that later on with a file. I'm not sure if I got that on camera or not. Uh, and then, oh yes, here, my old nemesis, deburring. Just one of those things you got to get used to. Lots and lots of deburring, because you do lots of drilling. So, fun, fun. And right here, I try to zoom in and, and show you that uh, this Piece, these pieces are, are perfectly matched, and they, they actually are. Uh, but I, this did it, it's poorly zoomed in. The, this camera, this particular camera, doesn't handle zoom real well. But anyways, you can see it actually came out very very nicely. I'm I'm supremely happy. Here we have some minor test fitting of the pieces to make sure I understand how things go together. And then I wander off and find the fork that I'm supposed to have, the, the forked doubler that I'm supposed to have, and take the bluing off of it. And then I, I want to talk about the fact that the, it's a little bit curved uh, and that just by its very nature, due to how the, the stamping happens, it has a curve and whether or not it's something we need to to, uh, to deal with or if the tolerance is within you know range of some something moderately acceptable. And I talk about that here. So this is the first time I've used this piece. This is a rear spar doubler. It's kind of a forked doubler. And I don't know if you can notice, but it's got a, it got a curve to it. And uh, quite often, you know, you need to uh, straighten these. But this is, even though this is really thick, these individual legs are uh, narrow enough that they just bend real easily. And because of where this is going on here, these will actually straighten of their own accord when you Clico them down, I mean, it's very little pressure to, to get them straight. So when I Clico these down, match drill, and then finally do the riveting, they'll straighten themselves out. So this one I don't, I'm not too terribly worried about. Uh, but other pieces that are just due to the nature of the, the stamp, the pressure punch that, that makes this piece, you do have to sometimes straighten them. So I get everything put together onto the rear spar doubler and, you know, get it, positioned actually on uh, the rear of the wing. I, of course, I have to read the instructions a number, number of times to make sure that I'm putting all the pieces on correctly. That's, uh, again, something you'll do. But then it's about doing that test fit and getting it on to the, to the, uh, the actual wing in order to make sure that it sits correctly. Once I get it positioned and, and get everything sitting down in the little grooves that they're supposed to sit in, I go through and add all of the Clecos that Cleco the rib, each individual rib, there are 15 of them, to that rear spar to make sure, again, a, you know, everything fits correctly. A lot of what you do is test fitting. You know, make, you know, put things together as if they were actually permanently riveted together and make sure things actually fit like you'd think they would. It's, it's really kind of cool because a lot of times you'll put, the, you'll look at two things, you'll be like, there's no, there's no way that these fit together. But then you go and actually Clico them per the match drilling that Vans has done, and sure enough, they fit just perfectly. And sometimes the tolerances are really, really tight. And it, it, I keep marveling at it because it's like, how the heck did they figure this out? Uh, you know, computers are amazing, but the fact that they figured out how to get this, you know, the computer to actually output a part that fits as well as it does, <laughs> well done, Vans. So next I have to do a bunch of match drilling and I figured it'd be much easier to lay it down and match drill it this way than it would be to come down from the top. But first I, you know, I put some blocks in place and then find my level uh, eventually to make sure that it is actually level on all, on all sides and adjusted accordingly. Uh, remember, you don't want to twist in your wings, so make sure everything is level when you work on it so that there is no twist and that's what I was doing there. Uh, and then I go through and begin the match drilling process 
when uh, I noticed per the instructions, kind of a, a weird issue uh, for the number of holes versus what the plan says. And I go back and forth working out whether or not this is an actual issue with the plans, if I've done something wrong or if it's a mistake. And so I thought it'd be interesting to show you my thought process and how I work it out. So I have found a possible mistake in the plans uh, or in the match drilling. Uh, and so I'm calling this out to Vans. These ribs are correct. So I've looked over uh, the plans quite a bit. And these ribs are, of course, I'm to turn the page. <clears throat> so these ribs here, these two, are W1011Rs. These two are 1011Rs. Uh, I wonder if this is because of. No, this is, these are, yeah, these are definitely 1011 R's, so these are the correct ribs. However, the match hole, drilled holes on this doubler do not match the holes here. Two of them don't, and I will have to ask about that. Hmm. Are we in the right space? Yeah. We're lined up in the right place. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah. So that's interesting. Everything looks correct except those two holes, which I will have to contact vans and make sure that I didn't screw something up. It looks like the reason they did that not even there. Hey, even this one's going to be wrong. But it's because they can't be where they are because they've got this cutout. Let's see if they've mentioned that anywhere. Match drill the number 30 will come between the rear spar parts and all three hinges. Match drill. Yeah, it even says match drill. So this is actually correct. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so the plan says match drill, not final drill. And there is a difference. Final drill means you're just you're just hole drilling holes. Match drill means you're going to be drilling new holes. So, um, <clears throat> a little panic on my part there, uh, but absolutely not needed. Everything is correct, and you, even though there are holes inside here, um, you are supposed to be creating new holes. There you go. Interesting glimpse into a possibility of panic there. Uh, I did not call Vans because it just stands to reason after looking over everything that uh, I was correct all along. The ribs, those particular ribs, have the holes put in because all of them have the holes put in uh, that match most of the use cases. In this, these two cases, they don't because, again, of you can see here this curve, uh, the fork, if you will. Those holes have to be slightly spread apart from where they are in the rib and it ended up being kind of a non-issue. So the plans call for me to machine countersink uh, the bottom row of rivet holes on this rear spar doubler and it's indicated here so this is a, a really thick plate once it stacks up with all the rest of the stuff and I'm gonna need a uh, AN426 AD4 rivet which is what this is and it's got to go and you know go through here and be flush so we need a machine countersink. Just these bottom ones right here. 
So I've got my machine countersinking jig installed. I'm going to first shallow it out quite a bit. Uh, and that's so as this pushes down, you know, barely any of it, uh, any of the, the flange down here shows up. Obviously the little nipple shows, but barely any of the cutting surface shows up where this flat. And let's see what we did. So let's just pick a random hole here. Ah. Pull this out just a little bit. The way my chuck is on this, if you have if you have this too far down, when it goes down, when you do push, this back of this will actually touch the chuck and it'll cause it to chatter, and that's what that was. Uh, I always forget that too. So there we go. You can see the, the round where it was chattering. But you see there is an ever so slight uh, dimple cut there, but it's nowhere near deep enough, right? So shallow it up. Or sorry, don't shallow it. Uh, deepen it a little by unscrewing, pulling back on uh, this rear part, giving this front part a turn, and then re putting it all back and trying again. See if we made it any better. Looks better. So now when I drop this in here, it's ever so slightly not flush. I can feel it. There's an ever so slight raise, but it's close. We're very close. So I would say like a half a turn or so. shot. <clears throat> Looks promising. And there we go. And you can see there I think I've gone a little too deep. So even though I did half a turn, I think I went just a tad too deep, so I'm going to back it off a little. And it's okay to go a little deep like that. It's not going to hurt it. So let's try the one next to it now. Now we'll put it in the one next to it here. And you pull that one in, and I would say that's just about perfect. So that's it. That's basically how you machine countersink. Um, this, uh, this cage, this countersinking cage is really awesome, and you'll change the depth based on what you're doing. Um, you know, you don't want it to be, this is a little too deep. I don't know how well this is coming out on camera, but you can see there's definitely a ridge. Like, you can see this indent, and you can definitely, there's a, you can feel the, the indent when you put your finger over it. That's too deep. This one, not really. I mean, probably like one or two little krennels or whatever you call these little teeth, shallower would be 100% smooth. But honestly, this is so close that it's pretty much perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these now. Now I'm testing them all. They're all perfectly flush, except for the one that is obviously too deep, but it'll be fine. And there we go. That's machine countersinking. Now to clean up the part. All right, well, I'm going to call it there. So here I go through and I finish cleaning up that part before uh, getting it installed on the rear spar with the other doubler. And... Uh, Yay. Um, comments. So the, the big thing with the concern with the scare, you're going to get a bunch of those as you go through and build the plane. You're going to go through, through, through stuff and have sudden, for the lack of a better term, oh shit moments. And I've found so far, nine times out of ten, they've actually been nothing and everything's been fine. So uh, don't panic. Worst case scenario, you can always reorder parts 
and Vans is really good about that. Anyways, going to get off and uh, go work on the plane. See you guys later.